afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the National Marine Aquarium's final online learning session, Mermaid Tales. My name is Marina the Mermaid, and I'm so pleased that you've joined me here today so that we can learn all about creatures who live under the sea. Now, if you were here last week, you'll remember that we learnt about life cycles of animals who live in the North and South Pole, and I read you a story about a narwhal. Now, since then, I have received so many beautiful pictures and drawings, so thank you so much for those. As usual, I have a few to show you today. So this one is from Orla, aged eight. Wow, this one's super cool. I particularly like the jellyfish and the diver as well. Super cool. Thank you so much, my lovely. That's brilliant. Oh, this one is fantastic. This one says, save the turtles, no straws. Because straws do end up in the sea, don't they, and hurt turtles. Caleb, aged five, did this one. And Caleb, that is very closely related to what we're learning about today. So fantastic work, Caleb. That is brilliant. We also have another one about straws here. <laughs> and this one's pretty cool. This one's been drawn by Darcy, aged eight, raising awareness about how single-use plastic straws are not good for our ocean. Thank you very much, Darcy, aged eight. And finally, oh my goodness, this one's amazing. This one's uh, been done by Amaya. And she has done some beautiful narwhals, which are really beautiful. A lovely piece of artwork with some beautiful narwhals. And remember, uh, last week's story was about narwhals. So well done, sweetheart. That's absolutely brilliant. So it's not just pictures you guys sent me in. Some of you did ask me questions as well. And I have chosen a question to answer for you today. One of you asked me, what is the smallest species of shark? Well, in the deep sea, there's a teeny tiny shark called the dwarf lantern shark, and they can only get to about 20 centimetres. They never grow bigger than a mermaid or a human hand. They're very, very small. What a brilliant question. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, I think it's time to move on to the theme of this week. If you were here for our one o'clock session, you would have learnt about how to look after the ocean. And that is our theme for today as well. But we're also going to be exploring ocean treasures you might be able to find on the beach. <laughs> now, when you go to the beach, everyone, it's so, so important to take your rubbish home with you. That is one way you can look after the beach. If you leave it there, it will get swept out to sea and eaten by sea creatures, which isn't very nice for them. Even if you don't live near a beach, just go litter picking in maybe your local park because the wind will take the rubbish to the ocean, uh, often to drains or to rivers which lead to the sea. So that's one way you can look after our sea. Just make sure you take your rubbish home with you. Now, everybody, I think it's time to introduce you to some cool creatures and treasures you might find at the seaside. Now, here I have a really beautiful shell. Now, the shells are the skeletons of animals under the sea, such as sea snails, uh, maybe mussels, oysters, clams, and they're very hard and tough. They grow them on their bodies to protect the soft, squishy insides. Now, when these animals come to the end of their lives, the shells get swept up onto the beaches and they're really fun to find. I really like listening to shells to see if I can hear the ocean. Just down here, I have some beautiful shells of all different colours, shapes and sizes. Can you spot a pointy shell? Can you spot a stripy shell? What about a bumpy shell or a spotty shell? <laughs> so next time you're at the beach, everyone, I do recommend just finding lots and lots of beautiful shells. They're really good fun to try and find. Now, everybody, just down here, I have a treasure chest. And in here, we have some amazing mermaids' purses, just like these here. Now, mermaids' purses are often found in the strand line amongst the seaweed, and they are shark and ray eggs, although I do like to put my pennies in them sometimes. <laughs> so this one is a shark egg, and once upon a time, a mummy shark laid this, and a baby shark grew inside it, and it wiggled around, and it strengthened its muscles, and when it filled the whole egg case, it hatched out and it swam away. 
and the empty egg case got washed up on the beach. So the next time we're at the beaches, everybody, look out for mermaids' purses. As you can see, they come in lots of different shapes and sizes. Fantastic, everyone. I'm just going to pop these down here. Now, when you visit the seaside, you might be tempted to do a spot of rock pooling, which is always great fun, isn't it? Now, when you go rock pooling, you must remember to use a bucket instead of a net because animals can get trapped in those little holes, which isn't very nice for them. Make sure you have one animal at a time, put some water and seaweed in there for them and always put them back where you found them. So in summary, follow the rock pool code. <laughs> Now, loads of creatures can be found in rock pools, which is their home or habitat. My favourite is a starfish. And just over here, we have a real starfish to show you. This one is a spiny starfish. And I'm going to tell you quite a gross, disgusting fact about starfish, everybody. It's about how they eat. Now, starfish have a mouth on their bodies. Can you just do me a favour for a moment? Put your hands out in front of you, put your starfish hand out, and guess where you think the mouth is? Is it on the top? Is it on the bottom? Where is the mouth? Have a little guess. If you're guessing the bottom, you are correct. Well done. Their starfish mouth is right in the middle at the bottom, and they sit on top of their food, and then they arch their backs up, and then they vomit their own stomachs out of their mouths. They go Bleh! and their whole stomach comes out and they suck up their food and then they bring their mouths inside their bodies again. Very weird. <laughs> so you can find all sorts of starfish in the rock pools around the coasts of Britain, which is really fantastic. And there's over 2000 species, pretty amazing. Now, in a rock pool, you might find blennies, you might find shrimps, little fish, um, but you also might find one of these. Does anybody know what type of crab this is? Have a little think to yourselves, hmm, what could it be? If you are thinking hermit crab, you are absolutely right, fantastic. Now, hermit crabs don't grow their own shells. What they do is they actually rely on the empty shells of other creatures. They have a little curled tail, which they hook into shells, and then they grow a bit bigger. And when they're too big for their shell, they'll discard it or throw it away and then find another shell to move into. Sometimes hermit crabs actually form a little line where they, tr they basically swap shells. So the hermit crab with the biggest shell will give it to a slightly smaller crab. And then the hermit crab, that hermit crab will give its shell to the smaller one. So it's a little line of crabs just awaiting the next big shell. Pretty cool. Now, everybody, I think it's time for our story today. And this story is all about a hermit crab. It's about a hermit crab called Hulk. And we actually have a hermit crab here at the aquarium called Hulk. And he inspired me in writing this story. So sit back and relax. This story is called Hulk's New Home. <laughs> Hulk was a hefty hermit crab. His arms were huge and hairy. He had a big shell, all coiled and red. Some folks found him scary. But the hermit crab had a heart of gold and always helped those in need. His mates thought he was a generous chap, a fine friend indeed. And this is, this is Hulk right here with his lovely big arms. Quite a hefty hermit crab is Hulk. <laughs> One day, Hulk had a problem himself. He'd grown too big for his shell. He searched the rock pools high and low. Oh no, he cried with a yell. But there were no shells around, you see. He'd searched throughout the night. He needed a new one straight away as his was getting tight. But then in the distance, he saw something grand. It glowed in the morning light. It was a castle standing tall and proud, such an incredible sight. There were windows and spires, towers and steeples, and even a driftwood door. He spotted a seaweed garden too. He'd seen nothing like it before. Here we go, children. This is what the beautiful castle looked like. With its driftwood door and its seaweed garden and all of its towers and steeples. <laughs> Fantastic. He admired the castle from afar, thinking it was swell. Perhaps I can live there, he thought. Then I won't need a shell. 
He said goodbye to his rock pool friends and scuttled across the beach. He imagined living in the great castle, which he longed to reach. Hulk hadn't travelled that far before he encountered a chum. She was another hermit crab, who seemed to be rather glum. Ruby had removed her shell and was crawling under a cup. Made of plastic, it cracked and crinkled as she lifted it up. This will not do, she groaned and moaned, placing the cup back down. Ice cream had dripped on from her from her cup. She looked at Hulk with a frown. Ruby squeezed back into her shell, which didn't fit at all. Round and spiralled with an orange hue. It was really far too small. Here we go. This is a picture of Ruby. With ice cream that's dripped on her from the plastic cup. She does not look impressed, does she? <laughs> All the shells have gone, Hulk said. But why don't you live with me? I'm on my way to a castle. We should be there in time for tea. Ruby imagined living in a castle, wearing a crown on her head. I could be a princess, she thought. Yes, let's go, she said. Not just one, but two hermit crabs now scuttled across the sand. They were keen to reach the castle, the best in all the land. <laughs> Soon they saw another friend. He was a hermit crab too. His name was Sid. He was very small and his shell was bumpy and blue. Sid was perched on a glass bottle, peering in at the top. The bottle was see-through, smoothed and curved. Then he fell in with a plop. Ruby and Hulk grabbed the bottle. They were worried he would drown. Out flew Sid, all soaked in juice as they turned it upside down. Here we go. Here's Sid, soaked in juice, getting sand stuck to him all over. <laughs> Silly little Sid. <laughs> Oh no, Sid, we hope you're okay, yelled out Ruby and Hulk. Sid was sticky and covered in sand. He crossed his claws in a sulk. I really do need a new shell, he said, but there are none to be found. Can you guys help me? He asked his friends. I can't see any around. Hulk told Sid about the castle and invited him to go. Sid imagined lazing in the seaweed garden. How could he say no? Not just one or two, but three hermit crabs scuttled side by side. A murky mist rolled in from the sea. They took it in their stride. As the hermit crabs continued, the sun started to set. The mist made it hard to see, but the trio didn't fret. All of a sudden, they heard a noise. It was a scraping sound. As they scuttled a little closer, they smiled at what they found. Their old friend Roy was an elderly crab. Crab. He was one of their kind. He used his claw to scrape a can. He had something on his mind. Mm, it's a metal can, he muttered to himself. And it's tough, that I can see. It's quite shiny and can be scrunched. No, this isn't for me. Here we go. Here's Roy in the misty, on the misty beach, checking out the, cat, the can, thinking, would that make a good shell? Mm, maybe not. <laughs> The trio asked what he was up to. He looked at them quite sad. None of this rubbish would make a good shell. If it vanished, I would be glad. Hulk looked at Roy's battered shell. It was spiky, spotty and brown. He told Roy about the castle. It's over there, a bit further down. Not just one or two or three, but four hermit crabs. So happy they could sing. Roy dreamed of his retirement home of a castle fit for a king. The mist was now clearing as the castle came into view. The crabs were so excited, they sang and shouted, woohoo! But as they approached the castle, their little hearts did think. The castle was made of sand, you see, and was crumbling, starting to shrink. The tide was slowly washing it away as the towers started to fall. The seaweed garden had disappeared and the castle no longer stood tall. The hermit crabs turned around. What a nasty surprise! They headed back towards the rock pools with tears filling their eyes. But then they heard humans laughing. 
as children ran hand in hand. They had been playing all day long with treasures they'd found in the sand. One was holding a basket filled with shells, hooray! She placed them back where they belonged. It really made Hulk's day. She started to clean up the beach. The other children joined in. Plastic rubbish like bags and forks were picked up and put in the bin. The hermit crabs laughed with joy as they danced in the evening light. They all found a beautiful shell. Each one fitted just right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for listening, children. I've had a lovely time with you today. This was our last mermaid session, but do continue learning about the wonderful ocean. There is just so much to learn. Do remember that I run bespoke sessions with children from schools. So feel free to chat to your teachers about me. And also, um, our staff here at the aquarium run virtual tours of the building, which is really, really cool. So if teachers are interested, please email learning at oceanconservationtrust.org. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and remember to take care of the ocean as well. I'll see you again soon, everybody. Bye.